So today we have another interview for Final Fantasy VII Remake, this one with Cody Christian, the man behind the voice of Cloud Strife, where he talks a little bit about the intricacies of voicing Cloud and how it can be a little bit difficult at times, and also the fan reception so far to Rebirth. So if any of that sounds cool to you, feel free to click the like button, and if you're new here and you'd like to stick around, you can subscribe, it is much appreciated. So again, it's super cool that Cody's really getting out there and getting to talk more about Final Fantasy. Since he hasn't been able to do a ton of press, I think the guy's just super busy with his TV show and then there's other side projects as well but this interview comes to us from Screen Rant. Now I won't be covering the entire interview because there is a lot of overlap between the other interview with Square Enix with Cody that we covered a few months ago, but I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to read it for yourself. It's a really interesting read. Cody gives some really great, thoughtful and detailed responses to a lot of the questions that are asked, but I'm just gonna pick a few things out here and there that stuck out to me that I thought were really interesting. So one of the questions they asked Cody is, how difficult is it to voice Cloud? Because he's a character that at times is really repressing his emotions and he doesn't always talk a lot. So how does he add his own personality and nuance to that performance? Cody responds by saying, yeah, it was difficult at times, but I think in those moments it was important to remind ourselves not to get caught up in this trap of trying to always do too much. To the point you just made, we know this character. This character has been around. We've established him. We know his personality. So the stoicism and this guardedness, it's justified. So I think just playing the reality of all of that and knowing that, okay, we don't have to do too much, a little is going to say a lot just being able to stay comfortable in that. So I'm not going to lie, there were some sessions where we would go in there and for four hours straight, I would be doing the most subtle, the most micro size and grunts and looks and moans and groans to the point where I was going crazy. I'd be in there and I would celebrate if I got to say a word. Do you understand? He then proceeds to laugh. Four hours of that is crazy. It was a fun time though. I'm incredibly grateful that that second game, we get to dive in a little bit more and this guy, he becomes a little chatty catty and wants to share everything about his life. I've enjoyed it. It gives me so much more to play around with. And as I reiterated in our Square Enix interview, Cody just really understands this character. And for someone who is brand new to the Final Fantasy universe, he didn't grow up with the OG Final Fantasy 7. His older brother did. He just kind of fits so perfectly into the role of Cloud and clearly understands the weight of the character, how important he is. But even just after doing one game, he clearly understands the intricacies of a character like Cloud. And one of the criticisms that Cloud gets and his previous voice actor, Steve Burton got, and even some people who listen to Cody, one of the complaints they have is, well, Cloud doesn't show a lot of emotion. He's just kind of one note throughout a lot of situations. But that's the character of Cloud at this point in the story. As Cody mentions, Cloud is a character that has his guard up, and he's basically just kind of a nerd at heart who wants so badly to try and be cool. And there are moments where you see that guard just kind of accidentally slip, and Cloud shows a little bit more of his personality, or he shows genuine worry and concern over somebody who just got hurt, or he takes interest in something and that pleasantly surprises the people around him to the point where he realizes, oh crap, my guard's coming down. I gotta get that stuff back up. Let's just move on. And that's what makes a character like Cloud so great. And I imagine it's really difficult to voice that because again, Cloud isn't the chattiest character. A lot of it is sighs, grunts, a few words here and there. And to be able to convey all of those emotions with just those sighs and the grunts, Cody is nailing it. And he really gets Cloud's point across with just those sounds and just a few words of dialogue here and there. And in Remake, Cloud again, he was very stoic and he still is stoic in Rebirth, but he's a lot more open now. He's starting to open up at times with the other party members and he's having these conversations where he's joking around with Barrett. You know, there's this really hilarious moment in Rebirth where Barrett is starting to think about Marlene and how one day she's gonna grow up and she's gonna wanna leave the nest and he's gonna be all alone. And Barrett is trying so hard to keep this brave face on about how he's not gonna fight her if she wants to leave, he needs to let her fly. And and then he has this emotional breakdown where he realizes, yeah, Marlene's gonna leave one day. And Cloud is just like, he literally says to Barrett, It's gonna fail you! Oh, I can't let you go, I'm too scared! Barrett, get your shit together. Marlene's barely out of diapers. You've got time. Right, right. I'm just getting worked up over nothing. Yeah, she won't be leaving me for a while. Then again... Hey! And he's just messing with Barrett. So you see that camaraderie 
with those characters and you see the personality of Cloud really start to shine and he's having these conversations with characters and he's not as guarded and it's really entertaining to watch unfold. And speaking of evolving the character, the next question they ask Cody is what is it like to evolve a character like Cloud and give him more room to breathe than there was in the original? Cody responds by saying, it's splendid. I think it's what everyone has always wanted, even if they didn't know it at the time. We fell in love with these characters from when did Final Fantasy VII come out? In 97? The interviewer responds by saying, yeah, I believe so. Cody continues, 2024, it's a long ass time. And it's crazy because when you grow up with something or you have a connection to something that would be dated at this point to the current generation, it may seem antiquated. It may seem like it's aged out of grace, but you have a special connection to it. There's a sentiment there. And I can only imagine how many people for decades were like, oh my gosh, I would love to reimagine or re-explore. Or what if they said this? Or just the fact that the original was not voiced is crazy. Everyone had such an intimate connection with that game and there weren't even voice actors attached to it is baffling. To go back and to have the space, have the ability to do so creatively, that the director, that the producers, that the ones that are really having their hands on this story understand the importance and the opportunity they have here to continue to flesh these characters out. To take something that's already made such an immense impact and say, okay, let's reimagine and let's re-explore not recreate, but just flesh out even more. I think that's a very beautiful thing to be a part of. And again, man, Cody just gets it. <laughs> he stepped into this role, into this franchise, and he's quickly understood how important this series is to so many people. And for a property like Final Fantasy VII in particular, uh, it's not really all that antiquated. Like Cody says, you would think it would be, but it's not. It's one of the those games that has really stood the test of time. And again, we've made mention in previous videos, there are so many themes in Final Fantasy VII that still ring true today whether it's mental health or like corporate greed or the health of our planet, environmentalism. There are so many things that we can relate to in that story and its characters that become special to people and to the point he made where it wasn't even voiced. I think that's what makes it even more special because all of Final Fantasy VII, the OG, is reading. You're creating these voices for these characters. You are kind of coming up with different scenarios in your head and trying to figure out the nuance or the, the tone of certain scenes and conversations. So I think that makes it even more intimate for the player because now we're in this world, but we've gotten to put our own stamp on it, which makes it so much more special, especially if you played it at a younger age, like someone like myself, that game made a mark on me and it's never going to go away. And I love it for that. And for everyone else involved who worked on the original to get that opportunity, which, you know, I've talked about Nojima-san in particular, the writer of the remake trilogy in the OG FF7, for him and the producers, directors, what have you, to get the opportunity to go back and revisit this world and these scenarios and just flesh them out even more and give them more detail, more depth. It's gotta be such an incredible opportunity that it's not necessarily rare these days because you see a lot of remakes, whether it's games or TVs or movies, but so many of those tend to rely solely on nostalgia and there's not tons of substance there. But in a situation like the Seven Remake Trilogy, I think the nostalgia is strong, but there really is a lot of substance there that gets fleshed out, which makes it hit even harder. And the last thing we'll talk about is the reception to Rebirth and has Cody looked at any of it? Cody says, a little bit, I'll be honest with you. I try to do my best not to be engrossed in the reception because for me, the beautiful part of this journey was the act of doing it. I live and take all my joy and fulfillment out of the creation process. And then when everything is said and done, I try to just give it away and leave it to the audience. But having said all of that, in the day and age that we live in, it's hard for me not to see everything on my phone. So yeah, I've seen it. I've seen the public reception. I've actually been paying a lot of attention to the people that are streaming the game. Everyone seems very thrilled about it. And that to me is a job well done. There's some people that aren't going to like it. There's some people that are going to have negative things to say, and I still see it. I still see the crazy nitpicking, the stuff that I'm like, really? The hundreds of thousands of hours and resources and all of this went into it, and you're going to talk about Listen, I don't even want to blast it, but I saw something the other day that just blew my mind. It was about a little detail in the game and someone was just throwing the biggest fit. And I had to sit back and go like, you're going to let this tiny, and then he pauses. I'm very, very happy that it's being received well, and I hope it continues to do so. And not only just for my sake, but for everyone's sake, for everyone that was involved in this game, for every one of my castmates, for every single person, because there's an extensive amount of work that goes into this. I'm talking people dedicating their lives, 
I remember our translator, Ben, for two years, this man ate, slept, drank, nothing but this. So to see the success, it makes my heart warm because I think about every single person involved and I go, damn, they deserve it. They really deserve it. And who deserves it the most? The fans deserve it. So to see them winning, W's in the chat, you know what I mean? And again, a character like Cloud is in such good hands with the team that's currently working on this project. Not just the localization, the directors, producers, but Cody. And he seems to take great care in getting the opportunity and the privilege of portraying a character like Cloud and caring about what the fans think. And that's something that everyone on this cast has in common is they just wanna do the best job possible and make sure that the fans are happy. And I think Cody, you are killing it, man. <laughs> I keep looking forward to every time I sit down to play Rebirth to hear what Cloud has to say, to see what his reactions are to certain things, the little jokes he cracks here and there. I love all of it. And to the point that Cody made about the nitpicking, that is 100% true. And I don't know if this is the situation that he was was talking about, I think it might be, but around the time of Rebirth's release, there was a tweet that went viral of a streamer who was playing the game and they had this nitpick about Cloud jumping in the water and then getting out of the water and his clothes and hair not being wet. It really bothered them and it was something that they were genuinely complaining about. And I myself saw that, a lot of people saw that and were like, hang on now, like that's your biggest criticism so far is that Cloud's not wet when he gets out of the water. <laughs> so it's the little nitpicks like that that uh, kind of make me laugh and I'm wondering if that's what Cody was referring to. So with that being said, that's the video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about what Cody had to say about Rebirth, the process of adding more personality to Cloud, some of the difficulties. Leave those in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.